Hi, I'm Dave. Everybody, I'm Jim. I spend my time here at Western University where I'm an associate professor in uh, the School of Physical Therapy and I focus a lot of work on understanding exactly what pain is, how we measure it, and how we predict it here in Canada. And I'm here in Sydney, Australia, and as a former professional baseball player with my, with my own fair share of injuries, I was always in awe of the physical therapists and medical doctors that were helping injured athletes return to play. However, I've got to admit, I was a bit frustrated when no one seemed to really know why one of my particular career-ending injuries never seemed to heal. Uh, and since then, I, like Dave, have devoted my clinical, academic, and research career to understanding why some but not others take longer to recover following a, a traumatic injury. And our current work uses magnetic resonance imaging to identify changes in, in spinal cord pathways uh, and skeletal muscles as potential biomarkers of uh, poor recovery. What we want to do today is just take a, a brief moment to share with all of you uh, the release of our new book. There it is, Jim's got it right there, called Musculoskeletal Pain. Assessment, Prediction, and Treatment, A Pragmatic Approach. Uh, this is published by Handstring Publishers, and we'll make sure we have a link to this uh, below the video. Before we go into great detail about the book, we'd, we'd like to also provide a brief backstory of how we even got here and maybe a little, little bit of, of, of why we got here. Yeah, you know, this, this book and, and really this work, it's the result of, between the two of us, well over 40 years of combined experience as as clinicians, as educators, as researchers, uh, mentors, and advocates. Uh, and in particular, a lot of time spent educating both pre-licensure as well as post-licensure healthcare providers, not just physios, uh, really any of, uh, any of those healthcare providers that spend time working with people with pain. We've done our best to contribute to this knowledge base as well. Uh, we're, we're combined, we've, we've published over 200 papers as well in different journals. Uh, we're, we're quite fortunate and, and honored to have been able to uh, speak with people around the world in, uh, in trying to, to help those healthcare providers uh, better manage and partner with uh, people in pain. Yeah, I agree, David. And I think you know, it's safe to say we've been incredibly inspired by the hundreds if not thousands of clinicians that we've been fortunate enough to to meet with and speak with around the world uh, and really have appreciated all of the wonderful feedback they've provided us and and having these great conversations about ways in which they were you know maybe even using our own sort of growing assess predict treat model but also their great feedback on how we dave and i might actually improve the model and we fully know that you know models are are not uh, finite they have to be very flexible uh, and they are um, really true, well and truly enhanced or potentially reduced with new evidence. And sometimes, you know, when we can combine findings from different models, uh, we can uh, enhance and or uh, uh, improve these, these models. And that's exactly what we're trying to do now. And that is what we've done here in the book as well. And, and with the courses that we teach, uh, Jim, you'd already alluded to the work you've done with, uh, with uh, muscle imaging and imaging of the spinal cord. Uh, my work has been largely focused in both the measurement and, and prognosis side, but really with a strong uh, psychosocial bent to it. And it, uh, these two fields really came together quite nicely uh, several years ago. And you know, we've just continued to develop our own models and frameworks for helping people understand pain. In this case, we combined both a stress dysregulation sort of approach with a neuroimmune um, an inflammatory markers approach to uh, try and develop our own model of recovery and in particular trying to predict uh, who might recover following an injury or following an acute onset of pain and who might go on to develop more chronic pain. Yeah, exactly. I think in short, the assess, predict and treat model uh, really was developed to, to make a complex picture pain seem a little bit more interpretable uh, and lead to treatment decisions that are, are you know, rational, uh, the justified, and, and perhaps even most importantly, they're easily adaptable on a patient by patient basis. Yeah, and that's been great. And, you know, I just, again, want to mention how, how fantastic it's been to hear from clinicians who have, uh, who have either been on our courses, have read our work, who have heard us talk and, and then reach out to us and tell us about the ways that they've adapted the model to their own, uh, their own patient population. Uh, so you know, what this book is going to do is, is based upon our, what we think is a very common sense, like we say, a pragmatic uh, approach to understanding uh, and helping people with, with pain, starting from assessment, when we really focus on sound, comprehensive assessment, 
then moving through prediction, which is to say, what's the likelihood this person is going to recover uh, with or without your particular intervention? And then built on those two uh, previous steps, then treatment should really flow naturally. So really the book is intended to offer a, a method that really is to, to help clinicians better understand uh, their patient's experience of pain and perhaps their reporting of pain, their pain behaviors. We've done our best to present evidence-based decision tools. Uh, some of those we've created ourselves uh, through our own research work. Others we've, uh, we've been quite fortunate to adapt and, and, and borrow from colleagues around the world. Uh, with real focus here on predicting both the natural and the clinical course of many common uh, conditions uh, such as neck pain, low back pain, uh, and really any sort of acute musculoskeletal injury or trauma. And then we tried to synthesize that work and uh, we put it into what we think is a fairly logical integrated uh, treatment approach. And uh, we've really tried to build into this framework a respect for the individuality of the patient. You're not going to find any cookbook recipe style approaches to, to pain management here. This is really uh, an opportunity for you to take a very complex and messy clinical picture, boil it down into something that makes sense for you as well as your patient and perhaps other healthcare providers. And from that, use it to make uh, informed treatment decisions that can be based on just uh, not only evidence, but also your own clinical experience and your patient's values and preferences. That's well said, Dave. So all up, guys, we've got 14 chapters that are packed with some really what we think are great information, kind of bringing together lots of different evidence around the world and, and, and combining all of that and trying to make sense, as Dave says, of a very complex problem. And so we really hope that the book will prove uh, an important resource for massage therapists, body workers at all levels, chiropractors, physical therapists, medical physicians, surgeons, sports therapists, osteopaths, you name it, dentists, and any clinician really who needs to make sense of the complex phenomena of acute and chronic post-traumatic musculoskeletal pain. And uh, you know, on, on behalf of uh, all the patients that we've seen and, and all the people we've had the good fortune of working with, I just want to take the opportunity to thank you and thank Handspring Publishing um, for giving us this opportunity to share some of that uh, global knowledge with everybody. And of course, we also want to acknowledge all of the, uh, the frontline healthcare providers as well, who, uh, you know, pain may or may not be the biggest issue on their minds right now. Uh, we know it's a major global issue, but there are other bigger major global issues happening right now. And uh, we certainly want to thank all of you for the work that you're doing and continuing to help those patients who really need it right now. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thanks. Everyone. See you later.